All right, we are live with Tuhan Jared Wehungi at the PTTA podcast. How you doing, brother? Good, good. How are you? Not bad, not bad. Trying to trying to stay sane. You know, this COVID thing has lasted a lot longer than I think we all anticipated. Uh, indeed, I know. I'm kind of uh, anxious to be able to get out and visit some of our uh, our friends, our network, our PTTA family around the world, and things that aren't moving as quickly as possible, but I am starting to set some things up down, down the line here. So there's light at the end of the tunnel. That's awesome. And in the meantime, we have two mandalas, right? Off uh, the PTTA instructor cadre. We have uh, Mandala John, uh, Frank Huizen, Huizen, Huizen? Huizen? Yeah, it's, it's Dutch. I, I'm, I, 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 call, I say <laughs> John Frank Huizen, but I, there's, it's, um, I know I pronounce it wrong, like everyone pronounces my last name wrong too. So I, yeah. he, he's I don't, <laughs> I don't feel so bad about it. And then we have uh, also in the video coming up, Mandala Patch Caballero. Caballero. And today we'll be talking about, uh, basically, um, these are videos off the Pikiti University. Um, you, you, you've seen them. Where, where do they fall as far as the curriculum goes? Yeah, so these videos we're going to be looking at are um, what we call um, bonus content. So we've got our base curriculum, and then we start feeding weekly videos that are um, support drills because the base curriculum doesn't cover everything within the art so it's what we call the foundation and the framework of the art our our, our, found, uh, our fundamental curriculum so these videos are kind of plugged in uh, on a weekly basis um, and these particular ones we're going to be looking at are actually from the silver membership which covers material in our first three levels yakan one yakan two and yakan three and so um, yeah these techniques will fall into uh, into that category all right, so without further ado, let's play one of these videos. Which one do you want to go with first? Do you want to go uh, with uh, Mandela Patch and his four walls quality controlling or, or Mandela John with this with an alternate called the Mama entry? So let's, do, uh, let's do Mandela Patch. Let's go to Mandela Patch. Um, here is the video. Hi, guys. Um, I'm here to talk about now your... Uh, uh, a little bonus material for your four walls, which is part of the Yakan curriculum. Uh, in those videos, we were doing just a sidestep uh, four walls, but now we'll, we'll apply it more uh, with a bit of power to see if your four walls would uh, take it. Okay? If there's one thing that works in a lot of first try combinations, it's going to be four walls. Okay? Four walls is like the wall of my house. Anything from the side covered by my four walls. Everything above is covered by my umbrellas. Okay, so one of the dynamics of the four wall is I'm supporting it with my support hand. Okay, I don't put my hand here or I put my hand here. I always support my hand on this side because if a strong strike comes in, uh, not too strong, and I put my hand here, it's going to break my hand. Okay, or if I put my forehand here, it's going to break my forehand also. Okay, so I'd support my hand here. So even if he does a strong strike, both sides. Okay, my my stick is not collapsing. Okay, and if you, uh, it's hard to see in in in, in fast movement, but uh, before the strike comes in, what I do is I flick my weapon a bit. Okay, and it's not angled; it's angled towards outside. So slow motion, it kind of bounces downwards a bit, deflecting the weapon. Okay, I'm not absorbing the strike, which will bounce back to me. I'm rather like meeting the strike midway. Okay, a small jerking movement. Okay, you can go a bit harder. Okay. 
flicking contact 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 all right wow that was a lot of information um what are some of the key points to take away for for the students at Pekiti University on this one, uh, Tuanjard? Yeah, I mean, Mandala Patch did a great job of summing up a lot of the key points here. Um, and he actually addressed even some of the variations that you'll see of this and why, you know, um, and some of the pros and cons of those um, key takeaways. Um, this particular version of the four wall that you see is what we call um, a sweeping, a sweeping and a broken four wall. So those are two particular things that you're seeing there. When I say sweeping, you kind of see as he performs that, the, the, the line of the, of, the, of the wall is sweeping rather than slashing, if that makes sense. So he's kind of pushing towards that. See that? He's pushing towards that as opposed to delivering like a number one angle, right? And so that's what we call a sweeping movement in the four wall application of four, wall, which is the fundamentals, the first type of movement that we should uh, look to perfect. Um, and one of the reasons for that is if I'm cutting down on an angle with that, um, there's a chance that my timing could be off and I could miss their uh, strike altogether if I'm trying to intercept a strike with the strike. So that sweeping movement presents a bisecting line that basically is, has, um, creates more what we call margin for error, right? If, I'm, if my timing, if my position is off, I've got some, uh, some leeway um, with that movement. So that's one of the, one of the things. That he's, and then a broken movement, meaning he actually stops, he halts the movement and doesn't follow through with that. And that's again what we call a broke, we're broke, and which is our, again our fundamental application of the four wall. A couple of other key takeaways: um, the the um, opposing force. So he's not just putting the stick there and waiting for it to be hit, but he's actually trying to defuse some of the um, the uh, the strikes that Mandala Jason is delivering there. He's trying to defuse some of that energy by meeting it with some energy. Okay, and then also the angle of the stick is in a position where it's going to deflect that energy. And away from him as opposed to into him as he takes away some of that energy and deflects that strike off. So um, those are some of the key, uh, some of the key things there and, and the performance, you, the, the supported wrist that Mandala's patch is using, that's, that's our primary way to perform this. And that way you're getting all, you know, you're getting your other hand and elbow out of the way of the strike so that you're not risking, running the risk of actually getting hit in, in your, your other hand hit there. There can be some, um, some some reasons why you might, in some circumstances, put that there. But a lot of people, when they're learning this, they do it, the timing is wrong, and they're basically putting their elbow past the stick or the hand, and um, it makes it so that it takes kind of getting the timing down first before you start getting into variations of the technique. Yeah, speaking about timing, this is one of those... Um this is one of those drills where if your timing's off, the consequences can be quite heavy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're, you know, you're going to get hit and you're going to get hit either in a part of your body, one of your limbs, your other hand is going to get hit. Um, another thing too, to kind of, uh, as we, as you kind of um, analyze the way that Mandala Patch is presenting the four wall, and again, four wall is a fundamental movement um, within our structure of Pekiti Toshikali, but he's doing a, um, the two of those four walls, right? We say the four walls because you've got two when the stick is pointing up, but if that strike was coming towards my my knee and now that angle as I present my four wall cuts downward, now that's a tip down for it starts up, but it, as it moves downward, the tip is down on that four wall and the same thing on the other side. So we've got the two high walls and the two low walls. Traditionally, as it's taught within like the 64 attacks, there's actually a high, medium and low. The high and the medium are both tip up. I'm just one's just kind of covering more of the head and then head shoulders, the other's covering more hip center line, and then the low two are the, is where the tip is down. Wow. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like I understand all of this stuff, you know, <laughs> because there, you know, this is a, this is a hallmark of Bikini Tertia, right? That there's a lot of it. Absolutely. And, 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 and when you start to break it down the way that I'm kind of um, articulating it, it starts to become, you know, what's, what's once was simple starts to look complex, but after you train it, what, what once was complex becomes really simple again. And, and it's just basically trying to utilize, again, I've got one and two angles, right? Those are part of my, my fundamental um, movements. Now, how do I use those same angles, movements defensively 
and that is the application of the full wall. Um, it's 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 really that simple. But again, there's nuances that can that can uh, enhance the, uh, the, uh, the 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 capacity of the technique. Um, by the way, a quick shout out to uh, Mandela Jason Jones as well, uh, being the an awesome uh, training partner here. Absolutely, and I think those of you that are on Piketty University have seen a lot of the a lot of the content that he's contributed to the to the success of the program and the quality of the program also. Yeah, but in this context, he's he's here purely purely to help uh, Mandela Patch, right? It's so beautiful this the community of of instructors that you've uh, cultivated over the years, man. It's really something special. Yeah, they all have great things to. Um, to, to teach, to add, you know, they, they articulate things well, they articulate things different than each other, which kind of reduces uh, any redundancy, I guess you could say. So yeah, great group, great group of guys. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with one more question regarding quality controlling the four walls. Um, what's, and I see Shannon joining in there. Thanks Shannon from Nomad Krav Maga in Vegas. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the, the question I was going to ask is what's next, right? Like for people who spar and, and, and like that high intensity kind of action and they want to continue to craft their four walls capabilities um, in, in a way that's progressive. And having learned this already from Mandala Patch and, and Mandala Jason Jones, what else can they do afterwards? How else can we test our four walls? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's there's lots of ways. There's, so there's, there's, there's several ways you can, you can pressure test your four walls. And one of them, is just um, doing uh, kind of, uh, you could call it, call it isolation sparring, but uh, incorporate it into your sparring. It, and it could be consciously with both participants, understanding that, hey, maybe I am on the offensive. And so you're, you're basically just going to isolate your defensive movements. And now it's your turn to, to be on the offensive and I'm isolating my defensive movements. So, and then start to add on to that. So that's one way you can do it or just make a conscious effort. Okay, in my sparring session today, I am going to, consciously utilize four walls spontaneously and less kind of choreographed. So that's another way that you can do it. I like to do, I like to go through evolutions because it just kind of enhances um, the, the way, you know, uh, build up to um, things. And it but if you don't isolate it, there's a good chance you may go through your aspiring session and you didn't get a chance to utilize the technique you're focusing on for today, right? So train it, train the drills, train, you know, there's, there's other drill the variation of these drills. And a lot of them are actually in the Piketty University um, platform, but there's other variations of the drills where you start really pressure testing the technique and putting some real energy into it, but in a controlled drill format and not that kind of um, uh, uh, less controlled sparring format. Uh, I, I do recall off the top of my head um, some some variations of it that Mandala uh, E from um, Shinkali in Japan, he, 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 he did some variations of it at the um at our kali and bali our bali indonesia camp, uh, conference and um, yeah, a couple, couple of years ago so you know there's a lot of that that's in the platform that you can see also i i heard some rumors circulating that he's actually got the nickname of mr four walls uh <laughs> <laughs> since well, I, 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 you know i i actually haven't heard that but i'm not surprised because he he performed he he, he and his students actually executed uh, very well so obviously they train it um intensively yeah, maybe we'll have him on in a future episode uh, to, sure. to dissect four walls uh, even deeper. Absolutely, that would be a good idea. Um, for now, let's let's move on. Uh, yeah. We have uh, Mandala John, called the Mama. I'm just going to let it play, and then we can talk about it afterwards. Okay? okay. Here it is. Hey guys, this is Mandala John on. Uh, Secure Island at PTA conference 2019. I'm going to show you guys some um, entries, some some variations from the Call the Mama platform. Okay, so the first one is going to be like this. You're doing your basic pattern. So here I preload the knife on my left shoulder. I'm going to ride it down and going to cut this arm. So Mandala Patch is going to clear this and we're going to go back in the flow. So I'm here, riding and cutting on the six o'clock position. All right. So one more time. Cutting and he's clearing. Okay, 
So guys, give it as a try, try it at home, let us know how it goes. Okay guys, let me, uh, before you leave and practice this technique, let me put in one more for you guys. And instead of preloading the knife on top, I'm gonna preload the knife underneath here, okay? And I'm gonna pass it down and cut here. So I'm here, under the arm, riding it down, cutting underneath. Okay? So one is underneath, one is on top, cutting the arm here. Okay guys, try it at home. There, Jared, I'm out of questions. <laughs> what, there was, I mean, I barely know Sabine, I've been studying it for three years. Um, those were some details that, you know, obviously I've seen before, I'd filmed, not anything that I've incorporated. So what are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, a lot of things, but, but rather than addressing the platform, because we could kind of go down that rabbit hole a little bit, which is the cult, the, the cold moment platform in and of itself, I want to address the actual add on that he put into that, um, in that particular video. So, um, so, I mean, you could technically the add on he put on that drill, you could add it onto several, several platform, um, flow drills. Uh, the particular one he used here is is a called mama, which is one of our foundational ones within um, uh, uh, the tri-V methodology of of Pikiri Toshikali. Um, the one he's put, the one he's using here in particular is a position where he's the, like part of the key to this position is what we call a pasunod actually pasunod and even a pasakai movement. And what that means is with his support hand, he's able to follow pasun or get behind mandala patch's hand if you see when mandala patches when he's first delivering the technique he's if you go back a little bit from there right there so right at that point john's support hand has to be able to get behind and for this particular technique to, to be effective he's got to be able to follow that and that's gonna so this particular thing it's a it's a timing thing and it's not necessary um, it's it's not a and um the key is um being in the right position at the right time Okay, because we see pasuno type movements, um, you know, getting being pulled off, uh, or, or following movements being pulled off, um, and real energy inspiring all the time. Um, it's just a Very matter. Common. Of, yeah, ab absolutely. It's just a matter of reading it. You see the load, and then even you know we often refer to um, you know the, the the principle of combat counter on motion before attack time. So I see the motion, and then immediately I'm seeing what's happening, so I'm going in. But there has to be a level of um, what uh, there has to be a little bit of uh, of pressure with that because if I'm just trying to go behind the hand without pushing it in a little bit, it becomes more dangerous as I'm as, I, as that blade is swinging down towards my face. So I'm catching behind the hand, pushing in a little bit, and then with the other hand, I'm not just using that defensive portion of that, but I'm turning turning that moment into an offensive opportunity by doing a gunting cut, a scissor cut to their arm. Um, so that's basically what you're training through repetition in the drill, and it's done in a way that you, you don't have to stop the drill. So it's not a it's not a, a a movement that has to break the drill and then you have to reset and start again. But I do it, but then we can go straight back into the flow, and now my partner can do a repetition to me, and you just get the advantage of through the platform of doing the same technique many times in a very engaging and and fun format. Absolutely. Now, um, people who are watching this, right? Uh, we can let's play the what if game for a second, right, Tuhan? So, why cut his arm when he can go up here? Why? Yeah. Why go for? Uh, why not go for a higher value target? And we'll we'll address that uh, many times in in these types of drills, gunting type movements, whether it's a forehand or a backhand gunting, like as is the case here. And actually, we'll address different targets, and, and a lot of it will be based on maybe what is available to you distance wise. If, I mean, if, at the distance John is in most of this time for him to be able to reach up into the face, it's going to be, um, you know, it, it might not be um, fast enough. He's going to have to close the gap a little bit more. So the most available target, you know, following what we call that, um, uh, you know, we, when I say we, I'm talking about generally the Filipino martial arts is referred to as the uh, defanging the snake principle, which basically just means attacking the limb. I've got a blade that's going to be quite effective to cut his arm. Obviously, there could be higher value targets, but oftentimes when we do a drill such as this, we'll start with, okay, forearm, bicep, neck, 
eyes and we'll, we'll actually walk up through different targets and every time i do a repetition we'll actually explore different things i could be cutting if i had you know the right uh, uh distance to be able to um perform that accurately absolutely and and the, the only reason really i'm asking is because people ask right when they see one option they think it's the option yeah oftentimes that's the case but uh, maybe this is a good reminder for people that this is a drill yeah absolutely it's it's good to it's good to um get a uh, a foundational movement first get the body mechanics and then as you mentioned start exploring the other possibilities and and those could involve different targets even in the position that you're seeing right now where john's got that under um chamber mm -hmm. under the arm and instead of just blowing off the idea of being able to cut anything he's actually going for a a hand cut the key there is you see what you go back a second you see john's thumb is 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 protruded forward which is key to this technique if he was to grab patch his hand at that moment and then swing it down he'd actually be cutting his own thumb so you see how the thumb is he's doing he's is not engaged in that grip he's just passing it and he's and all that's available now on the other side is patch's hand and, and wrist so um, that's a key to that that particular technique that john's doing there is making sure that your thumb is not engaged in a an opposing um uh you know um grip and that you're right there yep and so you see on the other side now, all that's presented is 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 Patch's um, wrist and hand at that moment. So that's that's key there, so that you're not cutting your own thumb as you bring his hand out. Not like that's a detail I, yeah. I would not have caught. That's a seems like an important one because the first thing people are going to think is that's a that's a high risk move right there. You, you, yeah, you're, I mean, a lot of people they'll they won't some people won't even think it until they do it and they realize, hey, I just cut my own thumb and then you know and then that detail will come out sometimes through through execution of the technique. But that is a, a key there. And then obviously, you know, in in application because we're not this is a flowing energy for the sake of repetition. Every one of these cuts would be followed up with something else. You know, um, I I'd cut and then I would enter in and uh, for a, a, another panapos type thrust or something. Or I would cut and disengage and maybe uh, uh, analyze the result of that particular cut if I felt that was going to be a, uh, tactically the right thing to do based on multiple circumstances. Sometimes it may be the environment, you know, can I actually disengage at any point and then analyze, hey, I just got a good cut to his wrist. That's going to have uh, either a psychological effect immediately or a, phys phys a physical effect um, you know, in a few, in a few seconds or, or minutes or whatever the case may be. Yeah. There are so many, um, layers of, of thought to think about, you know, um, when it comes to like, maybe that wouldn't be my first go-to move when I'm sparring, right. Cause it's not as cool. It, it, people may miss it. Um, and, and sparring has a special place in the PTTA. Talk to us about the philosophy. Why, why, um, do PTTA, uh, students, uh, they're not forced to spar, right? This is correct. No, no, no. Yeah, we 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 you know we ease people into things based on on their comfort levels, you know, because uh, everyone's in it for their own reasons, um, and uh, you know some and so we we ease people into um, into there's, and sometimes that starts off with what we call distance sparring, where there's actually no physical contact. It's just basically moving and analyzing angles and positions and distances and whatnot as you present mimic strikes and then your opponent is watching you and avoiding your strikes and whatnot so it may start off with something like that but sparring is an essential um element of, of just of combative training in general um and even though it, it, it sh we don't present it in a way that to, you know to, to tell people hey this is what your fight's going to look like because the energy of a sparring match is not always what the energy and the and and the um uh, how things begin how things, uh, you know, distances uh, and, and the variables that are involved there. But um, there's, there's things you'll get out of sparring that you can't really get from any other way or any other medium. So it's an important part of training, but again, not the end all be all, because there's other things that you should be doing also um, to, in, your, in your training progressions. Bad habits can be formed um, with an overemphasis and uh, uh, I guess a lack of mindfulness when it comes to sparring, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Just again, what are you in it for? That question needs to be analyzed. And if you're in it for to learn some, um, some applicable combative skill sets, then yeah, you definitely want to um, tailor your rules um, to that effect, you know, and, and uh, uh, especially when you're, when you're, which, which you, hopefully you are when you do this, but you've got protective equipment, depending on what kind of, what the, what kind of weapons you're using, you know, uh, for that, but um, that can give people uh, Get, give people a, a, a sense of protection that 
they wouldn't have in the absence of that protective equipment. And they and they may gear their tactics around that if they don't, you know, aren't, aren't mindful of how they're sparring. And so you don't want your sparring tactics to be geared in any way, shape or form around the fact that you have protective equipment on um, because, uh, you know, like, like I said, the training scars that that, that, that can create if uh, or, or when you're in a situation when you don't have a real, a real, a real self-defense situation where you don't have a helmet and gloves on. Absolutely. Just mindfulness. And just I, there's this totality of, of training methodologies that are employed, uh, a variety of training methodologies that are employed for my observation uh, with a PTTA. And I think it all, it, it all comes together. And again, it's, it tailors to training goals. I think that's really important that people understand what their training goals are. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, there's, uh, you know, like some people just enjoy, you know, the, just do it for fun. You know, this is, I just, this is my uh, stress outlet. This is, I, I just enjoy doing this and it is fun. You know, when you get the bug of, of, uh, of Kali, it's just like swinging sticks and doing double stick stuff and nice. It's just fun. You know, so some people just want to have fun with it. Um, some people are looking for um, self-defense application. They're looking for the functional skill set that it can bring for real world self-defense. And then other people um, are looking for, um, you know, maybe just a way to stay physically active, stay fit, you know, and um, so there's the, uh, there's that element of it too, or, you know, or a common, a lot of people are in it for all three, you know, a combination of, uh, of those three, three factors, but um, everyone's in it for their own reasons. Uh, there's this joke that floats around and I, and I cite the joke sometimes where it's like, well, it's FMA. I don't need cardio. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it, there's some truth to that in a way, right? Well, yeah, I mean, in to way. be honest with you, oftentimes, because I, you know, I, I teach a lot of seminars and I've had, a, I've got a lot of experience teaching weekly classes and, uh, you know, and um, there's, there's, a, there's a, a big learning curve. There's a lot of material and a lot of times the bulk of your class in, in Kali training is taken up with just learning the techniques and the drills and um and then by the time you get to a point where you can actually put some energy into it and get a bit of a workout your you know your session's done you know so right. um that that happens a lot um and so I, I i i would encourage people to um you know get don't just always be learning new drills for the sake of collecting new drills but hey go to those fundamentals and get some good repetition in and get a workout out of it so um, and then, you know, once you start actually sparring, people realize, you know, maybe there is some value to that cardio after all. <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't found it yet for myself. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, Tuhan, Jerry, we have some some comments um, moving back a little bit. Um, we have Oliver Martinez here. I'm going to bring that up. Um, and this is in reference to the four walls. Um, so he says, I know this exists in uh, Dose Methodos, but is this taught in Tri-V teaching structure as well? Is it? Yes, yes, absolutely. In fact, it's part of the um, Yakan Isa. So it's, it's fundamental enough that we put it in our very first um, uh, level in our curriculum. So, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, what you'll find in Tri-V and Dose Methodos is um, a lot of times it's the methodology of, of training in the early progressions, but... Um, you'll, you'll get to a point where there's a lot of overlap and I'm not going to say everything that's in one is in the other, but the fundamentals are, and, and so the, the constant, constant across the two is it's just the way that they may be trained. We don't go through and learn, um, you know, um, the, the, the first 12 of the 64 attacks that you would find in the Dosa Methodos of, oh, I'm sorry, not the first 12, but actually, actually 13 through 18 in the 64 attacks. Um, where, the, where, you, where you'll find this, the, the four wall subsystems. And so we don't learn it in that methodology, but we learn it um, with, with basically isolating um, movements and drills and, and whatnot. So it is an integral part, yes. That's, um, that's really cool. I'm still trying to figure a whole lot of this out. And, um, you know, as time goes by, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be able to ask more sophisticated questions, but I think there's also a benefit to, to me being relatively um, uneducated because I'm able to ask beginner questions or fundamental questions, I think, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. You're not jaded. You, know, have you, have been, you haven't been completely jaded yet or-, or I'm, get, I'm uh, getting there, I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so it's actually good to sometimes uh, come in from an out, a third party outside point of view because you see things in, in, uh, in, the, in the way that most people in the world are gonna see things when it, when it comes to this art. And sometimes ask questions that um, are actually more relevant than someone that's in the art might ask. 
Uh, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Well, I'm going to I'm going to try to be this way <laughs> forever, because I, I often find as well that when when people um, reach a level of expertise, they make assumptions that um, things are common knowledge when they're not, you know, because you're in that world so much. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, that happened. That's something that's happened the other day that that um, that reminded me of that, that when you're like you said, when you're actually integral into oh, that's what it is. We're you know, we're in the process of building um, a, a new platform for um for the brazilian market and it'll be a little bit it'll be in portuguese but we're going to structure it a little bit differently because there's uh, the, uh, uh, i guess the general lack of fma in general in, in brazil so we we're going to experiment with this but in building that some questions have come up from people that are involved with that that aren't part of the uh, the, the pt they're more on the technical side of this and and um, and it just kind of reminded me of how how sometimes things that I take for granted because I'm in the art are really not that uh, common knowledge or that obvious to people that are not part of you know, of the system. Right on. Well, this has been. I mean, this is cool. This is the first time we've done this. This is you know essentially a trial run. I think it went. I think it went really well. We're we gonna do things like this again. Like, what's the plan for the the PTTA podcast? I'm just here to ask questions, right? And, <laughs> yeah. and run the technicals. Yeah. You're. This is. This is about the you and the and the PTTA community. Yeah, for sure. So what we want to do is get um, get guests on the show. You know, whether it's uh, people that you, for those of you that are on Piketty University, that you've seen some of the instructors that present material. Let's get some of those instructors on the show. Other other instructors, and um, and you know, and um, basically just keep the um, feed the community, get more information out there, um, get people asking questions and anticipating um uh you know anticipating these shows that they can get involved with it there's so much to this art to this community that could be discussed i mean it's that's one of the things that originally attracted me to piquiti tertia in particular of all the filipino martial arts was just how many how much there is to the art is this the great grand scope of things mm -hmm. that we could a lot that we could discuss and we can really get into depth on so um, that's yeah, that's that's kind of the plan, and um, yeah, hopefully you know for those of you, uh, part of it too is, is is honestly to educate people a little bit on Piketty University. And a lot of a lot of people uh, are not familiar with the platform and the benefits of it. And like we saw today, a couple of great video instructional videos that are just part of what people get on a weekly basis. Um, and uh, so just to kind of educate people and support that community a little better too. And there's there's a guy by program. I'm still shocked. Some people don't don't take up on that offer. What's the Gabby program for those who don't know? Yeah, so basically, for those that don't know, that we 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 chose the term um, because the word Gabay in Tagalog means a guide, right? So this is a guidance program. So we we people that are part of Pekin University have the opportunity to opt in to this program where they get assigned someone that's of a very high rank, Mataas Naguro or above within the PTTA, who basically assigned to assess and, and, and monitor their progression. So they, they we, we create a a one-on-one a, um, a -on -one, um, video um, group with the two we've been using as a platform, just a secret group on Facebook. And we may migrate that later on to another platform, but, and then, as a member of Piketty University, you can share videos and get feedback of from that from your gabai on, on what you could do better. And then they will actually, for the first three ranks at least, will actually grade people and certify them um, one, two, and three. We don't we, we don't do that through just the base program on four, five, and six, the, the next three levels uh, of the base of the base curriculum. But um, the first three, we uh, we actually allow them to to go through and, and pass off that material with their goodbye. So it's a great, there's a lot of value to that. Um, and people, uh, but not everyone takes advantage of it, but um, they should. They should, they definitely, they definitely should. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a way of ensuring quality control. You can just watch the videos and do it on your own, but why not have a high level instructor say, hey, you could, you could tweak this or, uh, you're actually doing that part wrong, or this is the part that you're doing great. Why not do that? Yeah, exactly. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot that you can learn from just, like you said, just those videos. But there's nuances that it's hard to really um, address if you don't have someone that's putting eyes on what you're doing. And so that's where a lot of value comes in here. Fantastic. Well, um, I think that's the end of the show, uh, Tuhan. We're up to, we're almost at the 35 minute mark and we're, we're going to try to keep it under an hour so that it becomes watchable. And we're going to do this uh, more often. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, we're hopefully on a weekly basis and you won't, it won't, it won't always be, be my ugly mug on this. We'll get some other ugly mugs so you get to get to share that, uh, get to share, um, you know, who's addressing a lot of what you're, what we're doing here. So, yeah. All right. 
All right, guys. Thank you guys very much for tuning in at the uh, PTTA podcast with uh, 200. We'll see you later. Thanks, guys. Hope to see you next time. Akiti Tosha is the art of the living past in modern times. In an effort to bridge our global community through learning the art of Bikiri Tosha, we have created an online platform that ensures an unmatched standard of quality for distance learning. For beginners, the curriculum provides opportunities to kickstart your journey through a focus on our fundamentals. For more advanced practitioners, we offer the opportunity to enhance your progression by providing instruction that will supplement and deepen your existing skill level. Whether your goal is a dedicated focus on Pukiri Tosha, the Filipino martial arts in general, or if you seek to supplement your martial arts training through the bladed arts, Pukiri University will help you achieve your goals and take your progression to new heights. Filmed across three continents through a multitude of high-level international instructors from civilian, law enforcement, and military sectors, Pukiri University honors the depth and breadth of the system by offering a variety of specialized courses that suit your training goals. In addition, we have provided students with a robust network of senior instructors called Gabais, or guides, for personalized progress assistance through interactive video communications. This allows us to confidently rank and promote students through their first few levels remotely. It is the Gabai's job to monitor and give personal feedback on your progress. We have also created an active and exclusive online support group for Pukiri University members to share your progress and to ask questions from Pukiri University members all around the world. While there is no replacement for in-person training, we believe that Pukiri University is the next best thing and the perfect supplement for in-person training opportunities. Visit www.pakiti.university to learn more about our efforts to keep this ancient art thriving and relevant in modern times.